Let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear gracious Lord, our Redeemer and true King, bless us, O Lord, this night as we continue on with your word. Lord, we know that by your grace we are saved. And by the comfort of your word, you continue to lead us as you are the light unto our path, the lamp. As you guide us by your spirit, O Lord, bless our world this day. Lead us in your peace, unite us by your word, and may your word dwell within those that need to hear your word. Grant order to our world. Care for those who are on the front lines. Bless those who are in any harm's way or any danger. Lead all those this day. We just pray for our country that you may continue to lead us by your gospel. Lord, bless us this night as we dwell upon your gracious word. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The sermon for this evening is based on St. John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. Uh, the sermon is entitled, The Rivers of Living Water. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now Jesus says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow the rivers of living water. If anyone thirsts. Now what thirst is Jesus referring to? And Luther writes, Christ says his doctrine is meant for the thirsty. What kind of thirst is this, he asks. This is not a physical thirst, Luther says, such as is felt for beer or wine, but a thirst of the soul, a spiritual thirst, a heartfelt desire. Yes, a distressed, wretched, terrified and aroused conscience, a despondent and frightened heart, a faint-hearted conscience. It feels its sin. It is conscious of its weakness of spirit, soul, and flesh. It is aware of the meaning of God. It fears God and sees his law, wrath, judgment, death, and other penalties. Such anxiety marks the proper thirst. For us as Christians, here we have our thirst. For we know what is before us. Ever since our mothers conceived us, there we were born into sin. Our conscience is all too real for us. The flesh, the world, the devil, the deserved wrath from God. But here Jesus says, come. An invitation. All who are thirsty... Jesus is the cure to the quench, for the quench, sorry, cleansing and comforting the heart. That quench is the forgiveness of sins, the only cure, the only gift that rids evil, conquers death, and gives life to the world, the satisfaction for the soul. Not just any quench, but an eternal quench. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And in faith by his word, there we are given his grace in Christ, who in himself would go shortly thereafter to glorify God, to be the glory of the world by the way at Calvary, at the cross. Like the woman at the well in John chapter 4 who thirsted, in her flesh for those sexual sins. There Jesus says, but whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of eternal life. Yes, eternal life. This is the quench that God gives through the death of a son. Not just any son, but the Son of God, our Savior Jesus. We're there in John chapter 7, as we read today, there the gift of the Holy Spirit would be given. So appropriate this was, the Pentecost gospel for the selected reading on Sunday. 
As there the promise of the Holy Spirit would empower the faithful by the very word, equipping them and leading them by this life-saving message. No longer empty, no longer separated, no longer orphaned, no longer thirsty because the quench has been satisfied by the Christ. The most gracious drink. His work upon the cross. His sacrifice, His love, His all-encompassing work that reconciles us to God, giving to us not just a semblance of joy, but rather the true joy to live joyfully, to live freely and lovingly, to serve in the name of Christ, in His redemption, as we live under His eternal care. Now, this morning in our devotion on Facebook Live, we, we spoke about what it meant to live under the care of God. As it reads in the Catechism, that we, under His care, serve in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. That under His care, covered by His blood, in our gracious habitation of our Lord's mighty word, there we go. As our thirst has been quenched, and out of His heart will flow the rivers of living water. A boundless supply, a supply that satisfied, that is satisfied by the preached word. This word of the gospel that has set you free. His work, not your work. His work, His merits, His body and blood shed on the cross for each and every one of you. And there you are given the quench from your thirst. Restoration, the incarnation of our Lord, His death. Or there the soldier's spear, the blood and water gushing out of His body as the rivers of living water were given to the life of the world. Not only would He die, but three days later He would rise to give you the triumphal victory, the good news of great joy. The greatest news. And boy, do we need the greatest news in this day and age. Given to us by our God's love, His sacrifice under His eternal care. And in His redemption, from this out of His heart, our hearts will flow the rivers of living water. Yes. I'm the vine and you are the branches, Jesus says in John chapter 15. And there as Christians in this fruit of faith, (coughs) by the power of the Holy Spirit, there we go in good works. We see good works as a cup that overflows. It's all about being, right? Right? That such the great joy it is to live in the redemption of our true King who conquered death. That by His grace, our cup does overflow, Psalm 23. And by that overflowing gift of grace there, by the satisfaction of our souls in Christ Jesus, there we go and serve in the name of our Lord, not as a burden, but as one of great joy. As one that is under His care. As a redeemed to love and serve as beacons of light to all the world. And boy, does this light or does this world need a beacon of light? Right now, the world, as we know, is under great duress and disorder. The groanings and the outcries, the tragedies rooted in all that is of hatred and racism and the loss of life and, and the failure in vocation in so many different ways, tragedy, strife, Discord, utter failings in vocation, in in systems and terror and treachery, violence and sadly more loss against neighbor. As I was watching the news this week on Sunday, actually, I was sitting there for hours on end and just watching the progression of our world. How tragic 
prayers continually for the Floyd family, the peaceful protests, the looting and the rioting, the lawlessness that we see in our world today, where love of neighbor, well, the lack of love of neighbor was tragically on display, where many were harmed in body and in livelihood. Yes, we can all agree we need change. We need things to get better. We need restoration. We need improving. We need humanity to love and care for one another. There are many things that need to be done. That is for sure. Many for reforms, many pleas to listen to one another, love one another, and care for one another. Yet, we must always address the nature of evil, the nature of man. What is the solution? What is the answer? Is there a remedy? Is there a cure? The world is thirsting. The world is searching. The world is hungering for answers. And in these indescribable tragedies that we see, the unlawful ways of man, the loss of love towards neighbor, the loss of life and humanity towards one another, what are we to do? What is the answer in the nature of evil and the nature of man born into sin, separated from God, fallen from God, It's Jesus. We face a spiritual battle, friends, don't we? The spiritual forces of darkness, Ephesians 6, 12. This is what is in our midst. This is what people need to hear. The life-saving message of the Christ, and it will always be, to, be the Christ. His love is his sacrifice, his laying down his life for the sheep. This is love. This is what true love is for a world that is separated from God. We very well know out of the heart, there is no choice, flows the fleshly nature of man, strife, discord, disorder, chaos. And this perpetual cycle continues in the brokenness of sin. But Jesus is the true living water for each and every one of you. The one who gives you the eternal satisfaction. The one who finishes and fills you and gives you the life. Eternal life, that is. And as St. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. I always say it, but what goes in is what comes out. Friends, we are comforted by our Lord's word, the good news, the gospel. We're all affliction, we're all strife, where this spiritual force of darkness has been destroyed and quelled and conquered by the death and resurrection of our Lord. And we are comforted by this promise. That we know that love is found in the, word, in the one who first loved us. Through the grace of our Lord, we comfort the afflicted. We care for the sorrowful. We pray for those who are caught in the midst of tragedies. And as a church... We too, through the joy of Christ, go forth in good works to love and serve, to listen, to fulfill the very vocations that God has prepared uniquely for each and every one of us. For you children, to study hard, to be prepared to defend the hope that is in you. Again, not a burdensome task but through the power of the Holy Spirit that God promised that He would give. The Holy Spirit that has created faith in you, the Holy Spirit that has comforted and gathered you into His name, enlightening with you His gifts, sanctifying you, making you holy, and keeping you in the true faith. This same Holy Spirit continues to give you the great peace and comfort and satisfaction all by the word of the gospel, your identity in Christ, His joy. 
And there we as a church, we together as a body of Christ, we continue to pray for our world. We pray for God's peace, the peace in Christ, the peace in the midst of all the conflict, the peace given by the grace of our Lord. And we too proceed from the vine as we are the branches from the gracious and eternal good drink of our Lord and His promises in the Word and Sacrament. Fed full, forgiven, we go in His love, for we know how to love as we serve in our communities as the redeemed. We help those who are in need in Christ. We shine the light of Christ, His love, as we are equipped, equipped and ready for those most holy and joyous conversations that we from our mouths, we from our hearts, flow the rivers of living water. Christ to all the nations. His love, the agape love, the love that forgives, the love that gives life, the love that saves, the love that puts another before oneself. And at the end of the day, it's Jesus, the living water for you. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us continue with hymn number 800.